So fun fact about Jamie Page, if you ever need the proper food tour of Montreal, she will scoop you up and take you to all the hot spots. We barely even knew each other and you picked me up in your car from my hotel and Aww. like we had Montreal style bagels and we went to it was oh my God. There was some yeah. there were some restaurants. I, I took you to a lot of places. I completely forgot about that until this moment. It was like back to back. I loved it. I was living my best life. Also with we were with Jackie Wires. It was like a little Yeah. Oh, oh my, my god. god, that was so much fun. So if you need the recos, go to Jamie. And on yeah. that note, roll the intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, welcome back, back to Body, Body Talk, Talk podcast, podcast where we should talk, talk ourselves. ourselves. I'm Jack. And I'm Tor. And today we have Jamie Page on our podcast. Woo-hoo! Welcome, Jamie. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to have you. We can't wait to talk about all things YouTube. I was going back last night on your YouTube. It, I was back seven years. Like, I was down oh in the depths. You have been on there for so long. Maybe the first question should be, like, what was that journey like? What got you on YouTube at the very beginning? And what was that sort of first year like on YouTube? First of all, you should never go back that far in anybody's YouTube channel. How dare you? Exactly. Fair. You That's should fair. know better. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I actually just celebrated my seven-year anniversary, so that was pretty exciting. Woo! Um, it's been a wild ride. When I first started my channel, I really just started it. I think back then, nobody started it with any expectations. You kind of just did it mm-hmm. because you you loved it for one reason or another. For me, I was always such a big, big fan of beauty gurus. Mm-hmm. Like every day after school. Yeah, who was, yeah, who was your main info? Oh my God, Juicy Star 07, baby. Oh, oh. Blair Fowler, baby, was my the icon. Best. Like I will never forget just like sitting in my bedroom, just like this close to my computer, <laughs> yeah. just like completely into her tutorials. Like she was the best. Oh, that's so great. I when love did that. you actually start on YouTube? Was it 2012 or 2013? I think 2013, March of 2013. Wow. Oh so it's, it's not all the progress, like the embarrassing moments, the awkward stages. Well, oh my God. Yes. As I was scrolling, the mm-hmm. amount of hairstyles you have gone through in that span of seven years has been drastic. Like you were <laughs> at one point. I was, I like, was, I you was look great. You look great in every way. Like, I feel like that's really hard to be jumping around. I was like, oh my God, this girl has pulled it all off. I mean, my hair hates me for it, but yeah, I, I've tried a, a couple hairstyles. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's super. great. I love it. I always find it really fascinating, and I didn't even know this about you until we actually met in real life, is that mm-hmm. you were fully going through university and through school while yeah. you were doing this full-time, posting like four times a week, like every that's other insane. day, basically, yeah. editing all your own stuff, shooting all your own stuff, while still succeeding in school. Like, I don't get where you had the time. How did you do that? I mean, like succeeding or just like barely passing by? Surviving. I Questionable. Um, yeah, I mean, finishing school was a big priority for me. I know a lot of people, when they gain traction on YouTube, they tend to take themselves out of school, which is totally fine. That just wasn't my journey, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew I really wanted to get my degree. And my program was incredibly challenging and difficult. It was a very competitive program. I think they only accept like, I don't know, 60 people a year. What program um, are you in? It was communications. Mm-hmm. In so Montreal? It, in Montreal, yeah. Cool. At Concordia University. Nice. Um, and it requires a lot of writing. There's a lot of, there's like essays upon essays upon essays every single mm-hmm. week. It was just a very intense program. So it was really difficult keeping up with everything. I mean, I kind of looked at it as university was like my part-time job and YouTube was my full-time job, Mm -hmm. but I had no life. Right. I think it's nice. I think that's a really nice, honest answer. Cause I feel like I also get asked that a lot. Like, how did you get through university while also managing like literally a business on the side? Yeah. And I think that's an honest answer. It's like, you have to decide where your priority is. Like you have to decide Mm -hmm. where you're putting putting that energy because no matter what you can't be doing a hundred on both sides like that's just impossible impossible yeah what was that stage for you when you realized there was a turning point of oh I'm making fun makeup videos online to oh this is becoming a job this is a business and not in a negative way but like oh this is a career right I, I feel like it was a really slow process I mean like I said I've been doing it for seven years and I think only around like year four was was I starting to make money from it and I started to consider it a job honestly from the beginning I always kind of considered it a job Mm -hmm. the funniest thing I'm kind of going off track here but I used to work at Dairy Queen 
Oh, wow, we love I, this. We I love, love that whole story. circle moment. Yeah. I worked at Dairy Queen. I actually also worked at Baskin Robbins. So I was wow. like a big ice cream ice girl. Ice cream. Competitor. How yeah. did you yeah. <laughs> So I remember working at Dairy Queen. This is so embarrassing. And like, I just started my YouTube channel and I was like talking to my manager. I was like, I don't know if I can continue working here because like YouTube will likely get really busy. I'm like, <laughs> Who do I think? As you're I am. making like a McFlurry, yeah. or not a McFlurry, I guess. What would be a, a blizzard? blizzard. Yeah. A blizzard. How dare you? True. Oh God, <laughs> I've sinned. I'm so sorry. The truth oh is, God, though, I think so you kind of have to have that like blind confidence going into anything in this space because if yeah. you don't believe in you, it's already so saturated. How is anyone going to get on track to believe in you? Like, I think you automatically have to go into it being like, okay, this is going to be it. Like, you know. Yeah. So I, I really did always consider it like a full time job, but when it actually became my job, it was like I said, four years in and yeah, it was still even, it, it just it became like really, really, really slowly. So I was able to slowly get acclimated to like that kind of, I don't know. I think that's that actually world, a huge lesson space. though, when it happens yeah. gradually and at a steady pace, because it's not, you see some of these people who are in on the internet world for like, you think mm -hmm. of even um, Charlie D'Amelio, like those TikTok stars who mm -hmm. created their account four months ago and now they have like 45 million followers like it's insane can you imagine can and you imagine like, being 16 and, and having that type of responsibility and being at that vulnerable stage in your life so like that yeah. is I think a huge blessing that you were able to gradually grow with it learn all these whatever sides of the business and and grow and be a human totally it like literally the faster totally. you rise the faster you fall like I do believe in that I think people when they can't acclimate to the industry it is it's already so dark and so tough. And I mean, literally this morning, Jack and I woke up to the most savage reviews on I Apple Podcasts. Up. It's very no, no. potty talk though. No, but it's very no. potty talk. And, and it's, I mean, maybe you can jump in on this too, because I think when you're putting yourself out there on the internet, you're already welcoming that response from people, whether yeah. it's positive or negative. Totally. Um, and I can't imagine being 14 and getting messages like that. So that, I mean, that's just crazy to me. I don't, I can't. I mean, just thinking back, myself and my high school years I mean we didn't have this type of like social media as as like teenagers do now right obviously um and just thinking of like the type of shit that I would go through just with friends totally and like how horrible that always felt totally like to to imagine that on a scale of millions like I don't know if I would be able to deal with that. That's what I, agree. And I always talk about. Like, we feel so lucky that we are kind of at the cusp of it where when we were yeah. finishing high school, that's when like, like, I mean, Facebook. There was always Facebook. I only had Facebook. Yeah. That was the only oh, one. Really? In high school, I, I had just gotten Instagram, but like, no one so, else yeah. was on it. No, it you're like, right. 2012, 2013. You're right. You're right. I, I had Facebook and then I deleted it because I was scared I was going to get kidnapped. Yeah, Wait, it started no. to get scary on Facebook in like 2010. <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> Funny story. So my parents were very, especially when the internet like and all this stuff was just becoming more of a thing, they were very overprotective. And and I almost want to say to a fault, but not because I'm really glad they were that way because I would have been posting some shanksy stuff that I wouldn't have wanted on the internet. But like yeah. they were very much so needed all my passwords and like oh, wow. wanted to know everything. And I was in grade six, I think, when I got Facebook. I think that's fair. Which is like, yeah, like totally reasonable. So grade six, grade seven. And I remember one of my friends, <laughs> this is so funny. His name was Zach, but on Facebook, his username, like his name was Nighthawk. It was like kind of like his nickname. <laughs> oh call him God. That. So my dad is like looking at this Facebook. He's like, what is this Facebook thing? Like blah, blah, blah. He's like, who are all these boys you have added on, added on here? Who is Nighthawk? And he was like, I mean, I would be I alarmed as a parent if I saw <laughs> I mean, you talking to true, Nighthawk. True, true. But that's what I'm saying. We were lucky that we were at the cusp of it. Be like, it was an enjoyable, like, oh, I would log in, like, once every, like, a few times a week and check up on it. But, like, it wasn't where you wake up in the morning and you're scrolling. So right. I don't know how kids nowadays who this is their 100% everything even yeah. navigate it. Like, I would be messed up, I think, if yeah. that was the state. I just remember like picnic, like editing on picnic. Like, oh that's my god! All oh, my time. Yes, and, and it was like weird and a big thing. Quote, it's a yeah. bunch of little things, and yeah. like you have a photo like in a weird collage. What was with all the quotes? And then you'd like kind of put them on the photos and like the filters. Like, oh, OG creatives, I would like I to say. No, I yeah, it was a it was a really interesting time. Actually, wait. Speaking of like picnic and photo editing, Jamie, one thing that I love about you and take huge inspiration from is all of your like thumbnails and even your yeah. editing. And you do everything. Oh, thank yourself. you. How yeah, did you, you do. learn all of this? Like all of the graphic design and the, all of that. Funny story, That's actually. Really well, as far as video editing goes, I have yeah. literally been making videos since I was like 10. 
Oh, wow. Like I, I would grab my mom's VCR and I would take my friends. I would give them scripts and be like, you're doing this and I'm going to record you. And then I would like edit the videos. Right. So I've really been a filmmaker making... since the beginning. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say like that, but yeah, I, I've, I've just been into that art, I guess, for a really, really long time. So I feel like gradually again, like I just started learning the softwares as I was growing up and as I was kind of like graduating from filming on a VCR camera to a digital camera to like Windows Movie Maker to That's iMovie crazy. to Final Cut, you know. Um, but I also actually went to graphic design school oh, for a month this. and then I dropped out. Really? Before you, you feel like you were kind of already ahead of it and you were like, oh, maybe I should kind of like, wh why did you end up leaving? Did you feel you had? The okay, so rewind. We, okay. um, we, who's we, me, what I, a creative journey. <laughs> um, I actually applied to a photography program, um, like a university photography program. And I didn't get in. It was, it was even more competitive than the communications program that I was in. I think they accept like 30 people. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I, I didn't get in and I was devastated. Like I was devastated. So I didn't really know what to do because I actually ended up getting into my third choice. Mm. like sociology which was something that I was even interested in I kind of just you know threw that in as my third right, choice totally so I didn't really know what to do so I, I kind of went through this whole meltdown and by the end of it I, I I decided to go to it wasn't a university it was kind of like a I don't know like a, a college, trade school like an institute yeah 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 um, and I enrolled in a graphic design program and I was actually really excited. Like my headspace at that point, I was like, I'm going to be a graphic designer. I want to be like an art director. Like, I think that's mm -hmm. like a perfect path for me because it's kind of it brings in a lot of the things that I, that I love to do. And I started the program and I absolutely hated it. And I, <laughs> this is so dramatic. I'm going to sound horrible when I talk no, about like whatever. So I hated it so much. I had such disdain for like the teachers, for like my classmates, just everybody w was horrible. Like, <laughs> oh no. The, te the teachers were, were so bad. Oh no. Like it, it felt like I was teaching them, you know? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. I, I just, point, I really. You were doing YouTube, right? So were you I just doing? started. Oh, yeah. Wow. Kind of, I was maybe like a year into my channel. Okay. Yeah. But you were but, already like, exploring barely. graphic design on your own and doing thumbnails and all of that so mm -hmm. yeah had the background it's also really I mean, weird because when you're in the in, like industry let's say like you're already on YouTube you're already creating I think it's really challenging for people in that creative space to then be taught by professors like I know my boyfriend who went to film yeah. school who was already out in the world creating films you kind of like hate it like he's like I would sit there with my profs yeah. very similar feelings like why is this person teaching me when I'm already out there being more creative than this person? Like, I think it's a bit challenging. Yeah. I mean, I always just felt like I wanted to learn more and they weren't giving me what I needed to learn, you know? Mm -hmm. So there was one day, <laughs> oh my God. So I had already applied to communications. And so I started the whole process and because it's so competitive, I was really scared that if I dropped out of this program that it would reflect poorly on my application. Mm -hmm. So I was being kind of weary about that, but there was one day where I was sitting in class and <laughs> the teacher, I kind of spoke back to the teacher, which is something that I never do. And I kind of can't believe that I did that. I cannot <laughs> picture you sassing. Yeah. Every I, neither can I, I honestly can't believe it. But she said something to me that really was like very rude. And she's like, why are you even here? And I was like, I don't know. And then I got up and I left. <laughs> and you've never returned Bye. and I never returned I remember I left and I called the communications department I was like if I drop out of this program will it reflect poorly on my application they're like no I'm like perfect and I left oh my god wait this is an inspiring it's very like, dramatic it's like a movie I love moment. that I can I picture the scene you yeah. drop in your books and just well then I'm going and like storm out totally so embarrassing can we just like point that out like it was literally in front of everybody. I don't think so I feel like no. that is like major power move I I really I really com commend that I, well, it's I also that. one of those insane kind of like turning points if you kind of look back at like the course of your life it's like oh if I didn't do that like that taught me that yeah. I am self-sufficient that I can't totally. teach myself like it changed the course of your life so I mean that everything that you do yeah a hundred percent it would, was definitely a big moment but I just didn't want to take that teacher's shit anymore she was so she was rude she was mean she was like very condescending and like I was no. like I don't I don't even 
like I always have such respect for for people who teach me and like I would never talk mm-hmm. back to somebody but mm-hmm. like she lost all of my respect when in that moment when she was being so incredibly condescending and rude to pretty much everybody it wasn't just me yeah um, and I was just like I don't want to be here like this is not a good environment to learn so I was well like, and that's the thing fuck with- it Exactly. Peace Peace out. out. Goodbye. (laughs) Exactly. Well, that's the thing with any type of schooling or or a teaching kind of environment. It's like, if I don't respect you, I'm not going to care about what you're trying to tell me. And on the contrary, if you have a teacher that's incredible and like actually values that connection and, and cares about what they're talking about, I'll love to learn about anything, things that I don't even Mm -hmm. care about. Oh my God. I I like fell in love with some of my teachers in communications. There were some teachers that were just like, I, I took every single class that they offered because they were just so amazing. Like I could just listen to them speak for oh. hours and hours and hours, literally, because I took their four hour classes. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. I think once you, once you find your favorite professors, you just, you just only want to learn from them. Yeah. You're like, you you inspire me. You, you make it better. Like you make learning yeah. fun. And it's exactly. hard to make learning fun sometimes. So hats off to all the teachers out there for real. Yeah, seriously. Really. It's really. a hard job. So I guess at this stage in your life, you're doing YouTube while you're in school. And I feel like, I mean, at least from my perspective, because I had seen your videos before I had even met you, you were so a part mm-hmm. of the Canadian beauty blogger, beauty guru scene with like the J or the Jamie pages, the Jamie pages, <laughs> like the Samanthas of the world and with the Atlanta Ramas. And I feel like you were such a part of that OG squad that really yeah. broke a lot of the cool. like, barriers in the industry. How did you first like start making online friends and getting into that space? Hmm. Um, I actually met a lot of the people that I actually met Alana because she reached out to me over Snapchat. No way. She was like, she was like, Hey, I really like your videos. Like, when are you going to collab? Aw, that's so (laughs) nice. And then we ended up doing a collab. And then I think she came to Montreal at one point and like we met in person and then it kind of like blossomed from there. But a lot of my relationships that I, that I had made were made through collabs when people still did collabs. Yeah, what happened to the art of collabs? I don't know. Like- I feel like, I mean, in-person collabs still happen, but like, you know, that long distance collab, it just doesn't happen It's anymore. different, yeah. It really, Is that yeah. what it was? Oh, I didn't, I, I feel like I wasn't familiar with YouTube at that time. Really? Like, yeah. Would people like yeah. call in and like... No, no, it was more of like a like if somebody does like you decide on like a video theme oh. and then you each do that video theme and you kind of like shout each other shout out. out yeah I'd be like, oh, oh, okay. go watch jamie's for more inspo on smoky oh, hot that's a smart yeah. idea community and you would cross yeah. reference your audiences and it like totally that was the whole heart of youtube was the community part of it right that's yeah. amazing so that that's how i met alana and i met sam actually at an event yeah she like approached she came up to me and was like do you want to go for dinner and i was like <laughs> you're like <Pardon> really <laughs> why <laughs> me are you sure yeah and she's like she's like yeah let's go I'm like okay so then we just then that's kind of how oh, that's happened. so pure I love that how that is, yeah, it's super industry sweet. changed now that you've been in it like from the world I mean back in 2013 not a lot of people knew it was even monetizable like it wasn't even oh my god as yeah. so I'm sure you've seen the transition mm-hmm. what have been the biggest oh my god. revelations well first of all now it's cool right <laughs> everyone wants to be doing it yeah Yeah. like when when I started it was so uncool and people made fun of me for it Mm -hmm. and now those same people are like trying to jump on the YouTube bandwagon or whatever um which is totally cool but like it's just the weirdest thing it's so strange when we had asked Alana on the podcast a similar question yeah yeah, she was like oh yeah no I was not promoting it I was not telling people like it's funny how at that time everyone was very secretive about that sort of creative side of them and was keeping it to themselves it's, it's funny because I'm a Gemini I don't know if you guys are into astrology yeah it's big on this yeah so you okay. do, you have a duo dual personality yes definitely <laughs> but, but I also I can't keep my mouth shut ah. <laughs> oh. so I I say I'm like I can't tell people this but then I tell everybody I mm. see. So everybody knew. Right. Like I was not keeping it secret <laughs> at all. I was like, I'm so shy. I can't tell everybody about, about this subscribe. like secret <laughs> yeah. online, online world, but also here's the link. That is so funny. That's really good. That's <laughs> Did really you have good. that like nerve for the first video? I remember back cause I posted my first video in 2014 at the end of the year. And I yeah. was like, I was 16 at the time. I felt like at the time, it still wasn't really a cool thing. I was like, oh my God, what are people going to think of me? And before, like literally when I was about to switch it from private to public, I like, was like, oh my God, this is going to be so weird. People are going to like, I don't know. I had this like weird nervousness. Did you have that? Or did you know right away? You're like, oh, I don't care. Like, this is my thing. I honestly didn't think anybody would see it. 
Like I, I, for, for even years before I posted my first video, I would practice on like my, uh, my computer. Like I would just make pretend videos. Mm. Um, and so this was just kind of like another pretend video for me. And I, and the, but the only difference was that I was actually putting it out there, but I really didn't think like anything would come of it. I didn't think anybody would watch it. I just kind of wanted to do it because I was like, if I don't do it. I'll never know. So I just, Aww. I just did it. It's always the first upload that like is the hardest for sure. I mean, it's, first few years like the first year is the hardest I mean at least for me I think there's some people who just get it right away but it took me years like if you go back to my channel Tori I don't know if Mm -hmm. you noticed but I went through so many like phases of just trying to get into you know who I actually am on camera yeah like at the beginning I was so quiet and shy like I I'm so boring and monotone like horrible (laughs) horrific to watch really and then I went to the complete opposite of being like so perky, so excited, like it's like too much, mm-hmm, too much. Right. Um, and then I feel like slowly, it took me like four years, I feel like again, to like really come into my own and just be myself. And honestly, I think even over the last year, more than ever, I've really like, just, I'm just me now. Like I, I don't, right. I don't put on any type of telephone voice. Yeah. We, exactly. we always talk about that. We're like, what is... Like, I feel like it's really hard in the YouTube space because, and I I know obviously a bunch of YouTubers and some of them, when you meet them in real life, you're like, wait, what? Like you're completely different than your channel or you're, you know, like there's like a disconnect. Yeah. yeah. It's fine because again, everyone has that telephone voice. Everyone has that performance. Um, Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's really nice for the person on the back end, similar to what you're saying, where who you are online is who someone would meet in person because there's never that for sure like I feel like Alana is a great example it's like when you meet her she is exactly who she presents herself as online and it's such a beautiful thing and I think it's really hard to do that so I commend people like you and her who well I can totally relate to that because I know again when I started posting videos I thought like I was because I would hear everyone's advice just be yourself be yourself so I'm like okay I'm being myself But in my head, I was recreating literally like a Juicy Star 07 Blair Fowler video, talking in a voice, being what I thought a beauty guru had to be and like, oh my God, quirky and like Mm. trying to be a version of that. And I watched back those first videos and I'm like, first of all, that is not the octave that I talk in. I've got a very deep, (laughs) I was like talking in not my voice. And then second of all, you can, I could even see, like, I would like put a little candle, light a candle, do the fairy lights and like, everybody does that though. Exactly. That's exactly it. It was like following the routine of the, Mm -hmm. the formula that I thought I needed to be. But it's also one of those weird things is people will say, okay, be yourself. But I'm like, I was also 16. I still hadn't even come into my full like self yet. Like, how can I be myself when I'm still navigating, I guess, what that even means. But it's the same thing. It's whether it's being more comfortable being on camera over the years or growing into yourself. And we're all young adults and like navigating that part of life. Now I feel like I'm like, oh, I watched the video and that is me. But you watch it. And I'm like, oh, that was a version of what I thought I had to be. I think it can also go in a really strange way where certain people back to astrology certain people like naturally live in that place of performance like that's just who they are like it's just like I don't feel like I'm performing or I'm just extroverted and that's who I am but on the flip side of that I think it could be really exhausting for someone that is more introverted and when they are filming videos to have to put on that like that sort of act and I feel Mm -hmm. like I, I don't know. I just respect everyone in the YouTube space because I think filming yourself and always being on in any capacity is very exhausting. So it's it's just a really hard job. I don't feel like people, you guys don't get enough credit. Is, is well, what and then even like overanalyzing yourself and editing and you right. go through the post-production staring at your yeah. own face. Like, I don't know how you oh feel about God. it, Jamie, but like the last thing I want to do lot. is hear me talk ever again in a video. Like, mm. yeah. <laughs> Right. I yeah. I, I feel like I've almost gone the opposite way like I'm trying to learn to because I I feel like I I hate to say it like that but in real life like I'm very goofy you know like I'm kind of I don't know I and and then online I feel like I'm a little bit more professional like composed yeah and composed and recent more recently it was probably within the last like I don't know six months to a year like I've really tried to just allow that part of myself to shine and like I've even gotten comments of people like when I started doing my TikTok uh, okay which I, yes, I've been loving I did start way. doing TikTok I, oh I've Thank been you. seeing all of them yep yep I had supporter. somebody I had somebody comment which kind of took me aback being like why are you even doing TikTok like this is so not you and it's uh, like but it is me actually because like I do do shit like this mm-hmm. and but I, then I was like but they don't know that they don't see that right. side of me um so I've really tried to like 
show all those like different sides of yeah. sides of me kind of like again like I really do admire Alana and how she's able to be like super just like goofy and like crazy 100 in her videos and online you know and I even just that. in an Instagram photo, I don't know how she's able to capture herself even just in like a grid photo. You're like, wow, like you are so yeah. yourself. Like that's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. I definitely get that. And that's honestly like exactly why we even started this podcast. Cause I was having, I was sitting there having a conversation with Tori being like, there's all these other sides to me. And I feel like I paint myself and, it, and I'm, I'm the reason that it's happening. Cause I'm in control mm -hmm. of what I'm putting out there. Mm -hmm. I paint myself as a one dimensional version of myself, which sure that part is a part of me, but that's not the whole version of me. And and I had a hesitation. I was like, well, I want to be like taken seriously and I want brands to respect me and I want people to respect me as a makeup artist. And they don't want, I don't want them to see me for how young I am at that time or whatever. So you had all these like barriers that you put up internally, but you're like, oh no, people resonate with humans and all those That's sides of you. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. I've, I've seen personally over the past year, like a lot of value in sharing those sides. And I mean, it sounds like you're like opening up to sharing more of that. And yeah, 100%. that's also what makes it more fun when you just like, yeah, can be your be yourself I know that's the most like annoying thing but truly also well, also go ahead sorry no go no ahead. go ahead okay. <laughs> all the um, Canadians in here all the Canadians yeah um I totally lost my train of thought actually oh no actually I got it so on top of that just outside in in like your personal life just growing up and kind of coming into your own I mean that obviously reflects so much in in your channel or your yeah. social media mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah what was that like like did you feel like your friends and then even like let's say relationships as you were going through that like was it was it strange was it evolving like I know Jacqueline has even publicly discussed like it's really strange when people if you're let's say going on a date they have the ability to go online and basically get to know you before yeah. they've met you which is very unfair have you run into anything like that not really actually um, it, it is weird for me. Like I really, it's, it's, it's funny because I used to not really care to tell people about what I did, but now like, I really, I don't like telling people what I do because I feel like that they, they automatically like ask all these like really personal questions. Right. And they, and I also don't want to give them, give them the opportunity to like ha get this impression of me before they actually get to know me. you. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really weird how our industry, we've also talked about this. How come our, in our industry, everyone is allowed to ask personal questions? Like no one would ask someone in like the finance space, like, oh, so like, how much do you how make in a make? day? Yeah. That's always the first thing. I'm like, why do you the feel first thing, like you always. could ask me that? You would never ask anyone. You would never that. ask any other industry or person that. And somehow in our space, it's like, oh, we I welcome know. this. It's strange. It's, it's very wild. Yeah. I, I, and anytime anybody asks me that, I said, I say, how much do you make? Right, right. Oh, compare. Compare. But, yeah. So like, <laughs> and then they're like, uh, oh, well, that's uh, exactly. And then they get, yeah. it is so funny. I don't but know. That's the why. thing, too. People sometimes feel like it's okay to, to, to take more because you give so much online. So mm -hmm. everyone feels like they can just take and take and ask her because, or they know you so well. And it's like, you can't do that still. There's still social, social, uh, like barriers and cues. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Social mm -hmm. cues. That's the one. Um, but no, 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 go. Sorry. Yeah. But, but, but. <laughs> this is a Zoom. It's easier in person to like read when someone's about to share an answer. I know. Um, yeah. But when I was dating, that was the weirdest because people would ask me like, what do you do? And then I have to like, what are your through the whole explanation? Personas like of what you are. Do you just make up careers? Cause I've done that. I mean, I, at the big, I decided that I would say like, I work in social media mm. and like hope that they don't ask any further questions. Yeah. That's very, and then only tell it. them more if like things progress and like, I actually meet them in person or whatever. Cause like mm -hmm. these conversations would happen over like an app. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, it's just, it's the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest thing, especially if you are dating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how people deal with that. Cause I yeah. mean, like I've been dating my boyfriend a really long time and we met very conventionally, mm -hmm. like at a bar through mutual friends, like, yeah. and to be fair, he already knew who I was. So like, maybe already that's a bit of a, a bit of an issue, but mm -hmm. I feel like if there was no mutual friend or no connection, like I would hate to have to be like, 
yeah, digital marketing. Like, I guess you just start like, making up key keywords. So they just well, get confused. Tor and I also have this game whenever we travel, like whenever she's crossing the border, I feel like we all bounce between different careers. Like one day she's like, oh yeah, I'm an actor. Oh, I'm a social media. Like, cause sometimes when you say, I don't know if you've actually ever had this issue crossing the border. Yeah, I have like, actually. Yeah. It's such a weird thing to kind of navigate. And then one, I've had people that are yeah, just like, yeah. want to ask a million questions. So it takes like an extra half an hour. Cause they're just yeah. like grilling me on personal questions are curious we're like about. curious yeah. yeah what channel were you on it's like is that really <laughs> relevant while I'm traveling right now like yeah I remember I had a what what do you call them I guess yeah like yeah, a TSA I had it yeah I had no well when I was crossing the border like customs oh yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. They, were, they were like what do you do I'm like oh I'm a social media creator I don't know what I said mm-hmm. and they were like oh one of those it was like I know. It's such a negative oh. connotation. <laughs> <Excuse me>? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You have like someone that's so extreme, but this is like any industry where you have like a Logan Paul or a Jake Paul of the world who mm-hmm. creates a certain narrative for your career path. And then automatically everyone is lumped into that. But what yeah. actually is so fascinating now, which I was actually just like watching a few different things last night. Um, it's so fascinating being in the time we are now where we're in quarantine. We're in like what week four, week five in Canada. Mm-hmm. And now we're seeing all of these TV shows and traditional media now convert to almost a YouTuber because they're all doing Zoom interviews. They're all doing like little setups at home. And mm-hmm. it's so weird to see how now all these traditional outlets, which used to shun all of us, now almost are creating content that looks like <laughs> it would exactly live on YouTube. Yeah. It's right. so fascinating over the past few weeks to see that happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very true. Like even the big conglomerate companies that are so... Oh, that was a good word. <laughs> That's the university word, baby. <laughs> SAP. Word. Um, I love that. It sounded but, great. But I feel like like those companies taking the example of now, yeah, this sort of modern way of creating content is so interesting because I think it speaks to like the power we all have as creators mm-hmm. now and why brands continue to put all of their money where we are living because that's where the eyeballs are. And I think it's only exciting for the young 20-year-olds now or even younger, the people starting their careers, the 15 year olds that want to be on YouTube, like keep going. Like when people are like, oh, is there an opportunity to like start now? I think there absolutely is. I don't think there's any oh, I agree. barrier for entry. I think this is a great time to begin. Well, this is what I always say too. What I think about YouTube is so cool is that everyone has access to the upload button. If you have Wi-Fi mm-hmm. and a cell mm-hmm. phone that has any recording capabilities, you can be a YouTuber. I, like, yeah. And that's what I feel like made YouTube so special, especially at the beginning you had access to so many different types of people that maybe weren't getting the attention in front of traditional media that maybe yeah. weren't letting their opinions come to life. And everyone has access to it. It literally, anyone can do it. Literally so anybody. Not everyone's going to succeed, but anyone can try. Yep. It just uh, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> but anybody can do it. Yeah, True. Yeah, it does totally. take a lot of time. Sorry, I, I really like, am in sweatpants. Like, I was going to act like I was wearing jeans, and I'm just not. Like, bro. <laughs> I, I would like to say this is the first time in three weeks I put jeans on my body, Ooh. did my hair, and put makeup on. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I washed my hair for the first time in a hot minute. So, you know, I'm really proud of all of us for keeping up with our eyes. <laughs> um, I also had a personal anecdote to add um, to one of your YouTube videos that I was watching, Jamie, because I was watching your um, Bella Hadid uh, sort of like eyebrow oh, yeah. lift video. So you're going to die at this because when you were talking about how they like have surgery and stuff to get that like lift. Um, so my friend lives in LA, whatever, some random, like I, I know a lot of those like hair and makeup people that work with Bella and Kendall mm-hmm. and the secret that they do, I will tell you, they braid. So under their hair, like from here, they make yeah. really little braids that are hidden that literally pull the face up. And then their, their hair is flat underneath. So they do these mini braids to like basically pull the skin. Like I'm sure there was surgery involved as well, but that's their like yeah. extra added glam secret. Like they always have little braids like pulling up the top of their. That must I'm hurt sure so seen, much. No, I think it's like kill. the tapes too, you guys, like where they, it's. Yeah, but tapes like, are more visible. I feel like. That's the thing. You can't yeah. cover them as well. It's, yeah. it's the mini Or if you're wearing braid. a wig, it looks better. Wait, I had to share. That's crazy. When I was Thank video, you. I was like, oh my God, I have to tell Trade her. secrets. I know. That's crazy. Hilarious. Um, actually speaking of watching your videos, I was just watching your home or your office redo Yeah, you creative in every sense from the graphic design, the YouTuber, the director of your own channel, also mild interior designer. Can we just talk about this? Where to get your inspo? I'm obsessed. Whatever you, and you also share like a lot of your home, new home items. Oh, this is my new rug. This is my new thing. I'm obsessed with your style and taste. How did you get into that? Um, I don't know. I just like, I love redecorating my space. I get yeah. so bored of 
of my space so easily. And, and that's not such a good thing because I spend a lot of money on just like redecorating and furni new furniture and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it, I don't really think I'm like super into it, honestly. It's more so oh, just really? like, well, I am into it because I enjoy doing it and I enjoy like creating something, but it kind of, it's kind of like I enjoy creating anything, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah, I wish I had an endless amount of money so I could just constantly just redecorate. Redo when you work from home too, your actual physical space is very so important. important. Yeah. And if it's not reflective of how you're feeling or like, it, it's not in a productive, even like workflow, like it throws everything off. So yeah, very inspired to redo my entire house right now after watching that neon sign installation. Yes. Like, oh, oh, I love the neon sign so, so much. It's so, so much. great. I love Thank that. You. Thank I you. I want a Thank neon you. sign. I don't have a good wall for one. Unless it's right behind you. I mean, I guess these are my boyfriend's um, images, though, that he gave me from our time in Paris. So I feel like if I like took some, person, can't dilute it. Yeah. Like yeah. if I was like, oh, sorry, babe, I'm gonna need my name plastered. On <laughs> He'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Can we actually something else that I've been meaning to dive into, and I didn't want to talk to you over text about this because I had actually a lot of things to say, and I wanted to specifically say. Yeah. Yeah. I think you know where I'm going. With I, this. I know. I know where you're going. Your sourdough career. You have become a baker, and I've been watching your journey on Instagram stories. And I actually want to get into the sourdough scene right now, but I know there's yeah. a lot of trial and error. Walk me through your baking life and how you've been making these bread babies. Listen, <laughs> Jamie Page Baker is my new name. Wow. Love. Thank you so much. True. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know how I got into it. I think I got into it because I, I was watching Bon Appetit. Like, it's the only thing that I watch. Wait, I love Bon Appetit. I am obsessed with all of them. The Claire's of the world. Like, they're all such characters. They're amazing. Like, it's the only thing I watch on YouTube right now, honestly. Same. Um, and I think series? that's where I got, <laughs> that's where I got the idea. And I was like, I need to make bread. I need to be bread. Yeah. Um, so I, I made my sourdough starter because if you didn't know, sourdough is special because it doesn't use yeast. It uses a sourdough starter, which is essentially fermented. I don't know the right words, honestly, but it's fermented. So it's like bacteria living in this little like thing that you have to feed. Mm -hmm. It's alive, really, literally. It's, it's, it's alive. literally alive. So you make the sourdough starter. It takes about a week for it to like ferment and for it to like get all bubbly and, and is that alive. In the fridge, or you leave that at like in a dark kind of cupboard? you you have to leave that out for the first week oh. when you're like starting it. Yeah. And so you feed it every single day. You give it the same amount of water, the same amount of flour every single day, and you mix it up. And then it, it by the end of the seven days, it should be really bubbly and and whatever. And that's and that's when you're you're ready to actually bake with it. Wow. And then. Um, you can actually have that starter for like decades. So forever, right? Forever. Yeah, you reading. just need to keep like feeding it and it's going to, it's going to stay alive. So I know some people who have, who have starters that are like 30 years old that they what? still use. And is it like the better, like, does it make it better the more aged it is? Is that like the concept? Or um, I think it just makes the, the taste more complex. Maybe it probably changes oh. it a little bit, but it's also sourdough bread is actually better for you because it has that fermentation. Well, it's it. like the, like gut, your health, gut right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like kimchi and all those other fermented wow. foods. Yeah. Okay. But so, what went wrong with the first one? Because I need to actually, like, I genuinely want like advice because something did go okay. awry. I would just like to say, I mean, I've made bread twice. <laughs> but the I'm second loaf, honey. Professional whatsoever. So we're going to title this video, like Jamie Page, Baker Tips, or like we're <laughs> angle you as a, a chef for sure. People who actually bake bread will probably be really upset. But um, the first time that I did it, I over needed the bread. Like I was, I was going, I, I was watching one tutorial on YouTube oh. and the guy was like, need it for 10 minutes. I was like, okay, baby. So I stood there for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I was like needing the bread or needing the dough. Um, and I think that's why it came, became really, really dense. Um, because yeah, it was horrible. It was like a brick. So I made it oh. into croutons. <laughs> oh, oh, smart. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't well, the, waste it. The second one was stunning. So the second one was like exhausting to make. I mean, they take a really long time. The second one though, it took like 10 hours What? and constant attention. It was like a child. 
Oh my God. See, this is absolutely not the career path for me. (laughs) I am the least patient person ever. I would be like so out the door, like at Metro buying a loaf. I'd be like, I can't. Well, I'm just so fascinated. There's this actual like um, bread artist that I follow. His name is, Mm -hmm. I think it's Dan Larson. Like, hey, for for context, bread is my favorite food. Like I just, I love a bread, a homemade, like, mm, yeah, this is Jacqueline's career path. Amazing. Yeah. That's why I was like, Jamie, like keep notes. Like I have questions to ask. Um, anyway, so this guy, like, he'll, he'll do cool designs on the top and, like, a little flower and, like, it puffs up and, oh, my God, where was I going with this? Oh. Mm. Just how much you love him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess. Shout out to Dan Larson, but. Um, That's crazy. I lost my train of thought. I was going to share something about loving bread, but anyway, <laughs> very fascinating. Glad you have this career. So I will be texting you, you wow. next week once I finally start my starter. Sourdough starter. Like, you, li- you literally have to fold, 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 fold like do oh, these like no. special like massaging techniques for for like the the dough oh, I love and then this. you have to let it sit for like 30 minutes and c- go back do it again let it sit for 30 minutes go back do it again let it sit for 30 I minutes guess, go back question. do it again let it sit for 30 like it's a lot did a lot. it taste significantly better to like be worth the time yeah is it worth yes it? that's the question 100 oh. percent Okay, so the, I it's do so it. satisfying like when that bread comes out of the oven you're like I made you you are wow. my child and I'm gonna, you're like, I'm gonna cry. You would post something so funny. It's like, I get that. I would cry. I would shed wow. a tear. Yeah, I, I was like emotional. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, wow. You are my true inspiration. That is how I will be spending my next few weeks of quarantine. Figuring that do out. Do it, man. I mean, you only have time right now, so do oh, it. Oh, th- now's the time to do it, if any. Exactly. There was an article on Twitter being like, why is everybody making sourdough? There's a whole That's article. Because I, I watched yeah. it was like a little tasty video or something like the, you know, when they show you like the fast forwarded version. I was like, oh. Maybe I need to make this now. And then I was like, I'm just going to ask Jamie. Well, it's also really cool because you only need three ingredients and everybody has water, flour, and a starter. But the starter right. is made out of water and flour. So you actually only need two ingredients. Oh, and salt, three ingredients. Exactly. Very so like, it's, simple. It's very approachable. It just takes time and technique. I really hate to segue away from the bread because I think it's going to bring a lot of okay. listeners joy. <sighs> yeah, that brought me joy. I'm actually like craving it now. I haven't had breakfast. And I'm like, oh, a nice sourdough. But this is the <laughs> podcast where we shit talk ourselves. So we must have you share some, some sort oh of God. either a low moment or something in your career where it was like a head slap, like why, or just anything that you think may be. <laughs> Give us the dirt on Jamie Page. Give yeah. us the okay. dirt. I actually told Jacqueline yesterday over text. I was like, I have such a good, embarrassing story. I'm really excited to share. Good. This is like not like a career moment or anything, but it's oh, probably okay. the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. And it makes me want to throw up just thinking about it. <laughs> Amazing. Like, you, you know, when you think of an embarrassing moment, you just want to like die to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. how it makes me feel. Oh, I'm ready, JV. <sighs> oh my God. Okay. I, I don't even, okay. So you know how YouTubers tend to get dressed only from like the top up? Mm-hmm. Oh. Like we only on the bottom like right now it's it's shocking that I'm wearing jeans being I can only see my upper half so it's not unusual however I enjoy not wearing pants in my own home mm-hmm. who doesn't it's right. freeing right there it's, it feels nice no pants party is what I say mm. and the party is every day <laughs> and the party is here <laughs> yeah so sometimes I like to film without any pants okay yeah okay <laughs> really <laughs> really going. setting the stage here yeah setting the stage yeah so sometimes I like to just like literally only get dressed from the top up and be completely pantsless and nobody would know a Uh-oh. big perk of our time. time yeah huge perk so I was filming a video oh my god I literally want to throw up <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <They're gagging. laughs> so in my old setup there was a mirror right behind me okay oh no <laughs> well even right now like the reflection of this uh artwork behind you even I can like see the reflection in yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of reflections all around I don't know why the fuck I thought this was okay so I wasn't wearing <laughs> pants there was a mirror behind me I was filming a video like as I normally would so there was a point in the video where I bend down to pick something up and so the reflection be- so I you could see the reflection behind me in the mirror and there is my bare ass okay just in the mirror because I'm wearing a thong. So you just see like my bare just ass. Cheeks. Just cheeks. cheeks. Right in your face. Like I'm bending down. You see in the mirror behind oh, me. Oh my God. So I edit this video. I don't see that part. 
I upload the video and all of a sudden I get this sinking feeling. I'm like, I think you see my ass in this video. And like, I, I remember I didn't see it while I was editing. It was just like this intuitive feeling. I was like, I need to check this. And I knew exactly at what point you saw my ass. I don't know if it was like subconsciously, it was I did actually yeah. see it or what, but I, I went to the exact point and I was like, oh my God, you was see my live whole ass. Point? It was live already for like an hour. Oh okay. my God. <laughs> so I immediately delete the video, obviously, and I edit out the part and then I re-upload it and I'm like sweating because I'm like, people for sure saw this. I go on like beauty guru chatter. I'm like, see, did people post about stuff. this? Like right. I was freaking out. <laughs> it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's just incredibly embarrassing. And I go on Instagram <laughs> and I have like five messages from subscribers being like, Hey, Jamie, I just wanted to let you know that, like, at this part, point in the video, you can kind of see that you're not wearing pants. And, like, I, I just feel like it's, I, I'm sure it's, like, not something you want online. So I just figured I should let you know in case you didn't realize. And I was like, oh, my God, and people didn't see it. I was so embarrassed. Oh, <laughs> that's really, like, nice, though, Jamie, that they would that miss it. That is potty talk, like, low, low moment we've heard. That is absolutely iconic that is the best one i have to say you know what you, you know what, oh I my just, god I, I love the concept of you like doing this professional like and now that's crazy Wait, that is so good oh my god and i i've never really like spoken about this moment because i just wanted to bury it and pretend like it never happened but like it has to be you know what I worth sharing I absolutely loved if you yeah. just edited the vid video to add like you know like the sensor kind of blur on it but like kept the scene in so when you bend over it's just like nude squares like blurred over that would be funny too that would wow. be really funny that was a good oh one God. definitely Thank you. worth it wow uh, yeah it so was pretty remain, do yeah. you still risk it and go pantless when no. you film or are you absolutely not now it's pants <laughs> on party pants, pants on pants party off. <laughs> no we're the sweats never jeans when i film but like I've learned my lesson. Wow. My Actually, lesson. you know what I've done before? I had something kind of similar. So there was a while where I was doing a lot of like lush hauls. My audience loved to see like demos and stuff. So I would, and I wouldn't film all the demos in one day. Like I would film them as I would use them. So that way I wasn't like wasting the product. So I mm -hmm. would like, before I would take a bath, set up my camera and drop the bomb in and like whatever, film a little time lapse of it. So at one point I was like literally naked, getting ready to hop in the tub. And I wasn't thinking, obviously, that you'd see me. And it wasn't actually the reflection in the water, but then there was a clip where, um, like, the actual, like, tap, like, it's, like, a silver reflective, like, obviously, shiny oh. thing. And you couldn't really see anything because it was, like, a distorted, like, you know when you're, like, in a weird shape and yeah. it, like, is yeah. weird? But it was definitely me naked, like, hovering in, like, a disgusting, like, weird way. And whatever. I saw it in editing, so it was never an issue of me, like, posting it. But I've definitely had those moments where I'm like, oh, crap, I've got to be very conscious in case there's a reflection. Yeah. And I expose myself Scary unintentionally. Stuff. I actually just remembered I did this once before also. Oh, you've got a history. <laughs> yeah, I, clearly. I just don't recurrent. wear pants. That's my history. So I remember I took a photo from like above. It was like a flat lay. And in the reflection of one of the products, you can see that I was wearing pants. Wait, that's, and you posted it? Like, didn't even care? I, I posted it, but then I deleted it, obviously. But I was like, oh my God, I remember my friend texting me, be like, uh, you can see that you're not wearing pants, like in the reflection of this what? makeup product. Maybe you should that take it so off. so funny. Like, oh, wow, you are infamous for just running around half naked. I love yeah, it. Now, now all of your subscribers will be watching very closely to see if you have any other like little blimps or mess ups. There will be no again. more mess ups. She's very no. pants on now. Yeah. <laughs> that is the that. best. That is so good. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess like swinging in the opposite direction, like we like to end on more of a high note. So do you have mm -hmm. any career defining moments, whether, I mean, life or career, mm -hmm. but moments that you're like, oh, I'm proud. I did that. Like give yourself a little red carpet, like clap moment. Roll out. What are you proud of? I think I, my, my collab with Still Nest was a pretty proud moment for me because I was able to oh. create a product. So that was really, really cool. Um, I'm wearing my earrings right now, actually. Hey. I love the little like lightning bolt ones. Those so are one cool. of my yeah. favorite ones. Those are so cool. So that was really cool. I mean, it was always a big goal of mine to collab with a brand. Um, and so to be able to do that was just, it was a really cool experience. Oh, I I that was the process that actually like designing high. all them. Were you sketching it up or how does that look like? Well, it was, it was actually a year process. It was quite long. Um, we just 
because they they are based in Germany, so there was no like in person meetings or anything, mm. um, which which made the process probably a little bit different as like a typical you know design process. Um, but we pretty much like I sent them like pages and pages and pages of inspiration of what I wanted. They sent me back like designs based off of my my um, inspo and what I wanted, and then I would tweak, and it was kind of like a constant just back and forth. Whoa. So yeah. how long did it take from like seeing an actual physical product in your hand? It was about a year. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's it was insane. a pretty long process. Wow. That's so fun. Uh, um, another thing I wanted to give you a quick shout out. I also, when I was, you know, creeping your, ins or your YouTube, noticed that you're just about to hit half a million subscribers. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. insane. That is definitely worth a big like clap moment. Oh, thank half you. Half a million people. Isn't that weird to think about like 500,000 people seeing your name and hitting a button? Like let alone it doesn't, it doesn't, I can't process that. <laughs> like it doesn't compute, you know? Totally. Yeah. How does it feel? Cause I mean, obviously you live in Montreal. I know we've kind of chatted a little bit like offline about this, the idea that there's not as much in like the YouTube beauty world happening in events and things like that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel disconnected from that at all? Or do you appreciate having the distance? How do you navigate it being in Montreal where there's not as much as a physical community? I actually kind of appreciate having the, the distance a little bit. I think yeah when when I am really in it it causes a lot of anxiety for me totally. I don't know if you guys feel that mm -hmm. as, as well but I I find that like when I'm when I am seeing what other people are doing like constantly it just it creates a lot of like mm -hmm. stress for well, me then it's so I kind of embarrassing game too right yeah, so and so's doing this and so I do kind of like the, the the distance, but I also wish there wasn't so much distance at the same time, because it is really nice to be able to, you know, meet other people who to do the same thing. Like it kind of feels a little bit lonely here because <laughs> um, the community just isn't quite as, as big as it is like in Toronto or even in Vancouver or in the States. Right. Um, but yeah, so there's definitely like pros and cons to it. How do you guys feel about it? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I've grown up in Toronto, like it's home. Yeah. So it's a little different because I wasn't someone like chasing the industry, if that makes sense. Not that people mm -hmm. moving here are doing that, but I think when you're coming from somewhere else and you're trying to relocate to Toronto, it's usually because there's more work here and it's more of an industry. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know, it was always home for me and I've been here for 23 years. So I just have never left. So it's kind yeah, of I, I guess I understand, I think what you're saying about like the anxiety of being around it and like that's 100% what's getting like pumped into your brain because you're yeah. seeing it, you're around it physically, all of that. In some ways, I mean, I'm not, so I don't necessarily feel overwhelmed by it, but there was definitely a stage when, especially more towards the beginning when I was trying to like get that momentum going, where I felt like I had to say yes to every single event and take every single meeting and do every, like literally do everything to points that I would be running from events with literal like goodie bags and PR bags to another, like it was so I, like hilarious that I had the audacity to do that, but I would be racing around the city, calling Ubers, running, hopping on the subway, mm -hmm. changing from heels to like, I, I don't know how I even did that for like a solid year and a half. But yeah. on the flip side of that, I think being in Toronto, especially at the beginning for my kind of career path was pivotal because I got to meet those people in real life and yeah. have those connections, which at a point when I had really no momentum or nothing really going for me, but I somehow got my foot in the door to make those meetings. So I definitely see the pros and cons to it. I've definitely made a lot more conscious effort in the past like year and a half, two years to be really intentional with where I spend my time, whether it's events mm -hmm. or industry things. Um, just so that way my life, yeah, it has balance, but that's I think, something that I, think, I struggle with. Yeah. I think the city in general, because of the presence of the industry can force people to be yes, yes, men, you know, it's yeah, like, for sure. you feel like you really have to show up. And I, I will say, I think people that don't show up do lose out on opportunities, which is kind of a savage thing. But I think because like Jacqueline was saying, when you do have the opportunity to be face to face with either brands or other creators or whatever it might be people make impressions right and and then other people that are not in that moment can be forgotten like if you're a toronto creator so i don't know it, it is pros and cons it's exhausting like that's what i'm saying it's like a double-edged sword and there, i can see yeah. it, it kind of also that. has like the fear of missing out feeling i'm holding a rose quartz crystal by the way if you're wondering oh, why so that's nice. there it was just oh, like on it. my desk and i was like playing with it sorry no, um but um it's also like this feeling of fear of, of missing the FOMO, out yeah um and yeah. I mean, like you said, like if you don't do these events, like you do feel like you're missing out. And in a lot of ways you actually are. 
Um, and so not having all these events here takes that away. Right. Um, so I don't have to feel bad for not, for not going. Yeah, or that's whatever. nice. <laughs> I am also like a really introverted person in a lot of ways. Like I don't, I don't thrive in social, big social situations. At least it feels like I don't. Um, so yeah, I do prefer to kind of just do my own thing here and not yeah. feel like I'm, I'm saying no to everything when like yeah. I shouldn't be. Well, that's the thing. It cuts out half of the noise. Like, like I had the a personal kind of like pressure that I put on myself to again say yes to everything mm-hmm. but if you don't have those people those events happening though, like then you can just focus on your stuff I would be at the point where I would be saying yes to things fill a day of events or like whatever industry related things and then not be posting my like on my schedule I'd miss a yeah. day of video posting so it's like it yeah. was so counterintuitive like mm-hmm. right yeah well, I will say when I'm invited to things, when all of this is over, I will be showing up. So oh my God, same. Out, please out. invite me to yeah. everything. <laughs> Every yeah, brand listening, please invite us all to your party. <laughs> I know there. now there's nothing more that I want than like a little event, like pop up, like Just go a by. nice <sighs> blogger dinner. I will be there. Like, please invite me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's important to, to remember that mindset though. And like not take those things for granted. It's so true. It's so well, true. Like, I, keep, it's so- I keep saying that. It's so easy to get used to, yeah, like the perks of our job, the privilege that Mm -hmm. we have inherently with the careers we have. And then, of course, when it's taken away, you're like, oh, maybe I did take this for granted and didn't even realize. So even outside of career, like just in your personal life, like going out with friends and like doing those like really simple things, like just appreciating that a little bit more once this is over. Well, I'm getting coffee. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me too, something that's been like, I mean, I've always known this, but again, it's these moments where you really, you really feel it and appreciate it. It's like, I am so reliant on my surroundings and that the people around me to help support me, to make me feel in a mental, like mentally in a good place. Like mm-hmm. uh, we do all so, like rely on a community and a society to do mm-hmm. all that, whether it's, yeah, saying hi to those people that give you the, your latte in your morning, going, having a little gossip sesh with friends in real life we're lucky we have FaceTime and Zoom and all of that to make you kind of feel like you still have that connection, but there's nothing like nothing compares to obviously being with people in real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, I think that takes us to our favorite part of (laughs) potty talk, which is our game, which is roses and thorns. So we like to share a thorn, something that has either happened in the last week or day that you just need to get off your chest. And then two roses, two things you're either grateful for or that have lightened your day or brightened your day. And then a rosebud, something you're looking forward to. So maybe Jacqueline, you can take yeah, it Yeah, I'll take it away. I don't know if I've ever played this with you, Jamie. It's like a little gratitude game that we, we used to I feel to like we start. did. We probably did. I make everyone do it to the point that it's like annoying, <laughs> but that's why me and Paul were like, we have to instill this in the pod because we would always do it. And our friends would be like, guys, we don't want to play this game. But, uh, <laughs> I do think gratitude is very important. It is. Um, especially times like now, which mm-hmm. anyways. Um, okay. So a thorn. Um, a thorn is, <laughs> this is so trivial. My uh, washing machine is kind of like broken. Mm. It washes the clothes, but it's not wringing them out to the point that like it's in a pool of water. Like, and I have Ooh. to like, something is wrong. I tried fixing it. I've read every single forum. And I like to think I'm fairly self-sufficient and like my own handyman. I have tried everything from like rewiring to fix, like I've done Ooh. everything and something is wrong. So I think I need to get a new washing machine, which is just a thing you don't ever want to spend money on. Um, so really, little... I actually really enjoyed choosing my washer and dryer. I'm not like excited, like oh, I want to drop a grand on a, like. No, that's true. I guess financially, no, but to actually be able to choose like the color and the functions, like that's oh, okay. so that doesn't <laughs> like I just want mine to work. Oh, okay. so, yeah, that was definitely a thorn that's been carrying over the last 24 hours. Um, and a rose is actually catching up with you, Jamie. I feel like we hadn't talked oh. in a hot minute and I've just been like weirdly replying to your sourdough pictures in your journey. <laughs> <laughs> so it was nice to actually catch up. And, uh, finally yeah, it was really nice. Um, and another rose is honestly the weather lately. I finally set up my balcony and I've been mm. just like having the door open and like having a nice breeze in mm-hmm. actually being confined in my tiny little <laughs> apartment that I have here. Um, it's been really nice to like get some fresh air. And since the weather is getting better, that's always nice. And a rosebud, something I'm looking forward to is actually today in general, we have, we're filming a lot of potty talk episodes and we're going to be doing a potty talk after dark, which will be where we crack open the The alcohol. (laughs) Um, Sounds sexy. Which will be a new concept, which, you know (laughs) what, if you want to come on for a potty talk after dark, we'll circle back if uh, the show ends up going well. Honestly, I'm so down. That sounds like a great time. Well, you know what? All we have is time these days. So (laughs) that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. 
You go ahead, Jamie. You take it away. No, you go. Okay. Um, (laughs) The thorn is so alive and well, and it's that I had to take off my shellac myself yesterday, (laughs) and I filed so deeply that I burnt my nails. Like, I don't know if you can see, but it's like red, and so last night I slept with ice packs. I'm literally not kidding. Wait, you filed your nails down that low? Yeah, yeah. So they're burnt, so it's like red. Like, it's like the skin is like, it's terrible, and so it took so long to do it. So I literally... Thank God Halo Top had like sent me ice cream. So they sent those like ice packs that you can like refreeze and freeze. So I literally laid with like a Halo Top ice pack just as I felt as I fell asleep last night. Oh, Terrible because it feels like burnt. Like when I put water, hot water. Yeah, because the like, nail's so thin. Yeah, right? my God. Yeah. But that is for sure the thorn of the day. Rose <laughs> is that as I was listening to you speak, Jamie, I had this really strange flashback and I was like, have I met her? Like I had this really weird moment. And I actually do believe now that we actually have met. No way. And it was at Oshiega like four years ago at Very a possible. dinner. Yes. Alana was oh, there. The and oh, yes, she showed I up. Yes. yes. And I was just sitting there and I was like, wait, I think I've met you, but maybe you were blonde at the time. I was, yeah. As I was like thinking yeah, about the flashback. So anyways, this was the rose. I was like, we've met. <laughs> it's oh my God, that's so the Smashbox true. dinner, right? Yes, what? yes, yes. That would have been the first time I met you too, no. but we didn't even like, I don't think, I don't even think I talked to you. Because the first time no. I, met, like, I actually met you. Yeah, that's the thing. I think it's so York brief. Fashion. It was like, hey, and then it was like, you know, everyone was doing their thing. Oh, that is so true. You I remember totally, that now. Yeah. You weren't even, didn't you just like tag along for the dinner? Like, weren't you with another brand or something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Okay. So, but no, I just had this. That's a rose. I was like, we have met. That's you are so good. right. Um, I, I, knew, I knew it. I knew it. I felt it. I felt it in my heart. I know. Yeah, it but, seemed really weird when I was like, nice to virtually meet. I was like, mm, something is wrong. <laughs> Don't you hate when people send you the email? They're like, nice to e meet you. Like, it's like this weird joke that we're like, oh, I say I that. I say time. that. I was going to say, I oh, say that. I say it too. It's just like hilarious. We're like, Nice to meet you, Veronica. Like, it's just the funniest thing. No, that's very <laughs> true. And then my second rose is that um, when I went to your channel yesterday, Le Soleil song that came on with your, like, cinematography Relaxing. makeup, uh, I will be listening to that for uh, time to come. Just loved that tune. I was like, I'm going to find this and just play it. So that is the second rose. And then Rosebud, looking forward to hopefully next time we're in Montreal, just you can give me that food tour. I would mm. love that. Oh my god, careful. that's like my joy in life is giving people food tours in Montreal. It really it was is. Also, so iconic because I think we went to a restaurant and then immediately drove to the next location to get bagels. Like it was just, it was. I loved it. Because mm. you can't country. come to Montreal and not get I bagels. Know. You need to. And a bagel. Montreal style bagel is what I buy, even in Toronto. I just oh my god, so good. Wait, you're gonna die. Have anything so we, else? I had this like traumatizing, and I say traumatizing very dramatically. Um, drive home after it was actually Oshiega last year. And ironically, Tori had flown out. So let me give you a little bit of of backstory. So we were going with Tori, Tori's boyfriend, and then another couple. And then it was me. And we were all kind of like staring at an Airbnb, driving together. We decided to be like, whatever, economical. And we're like, we don't need to buy flights. They were kind of expensive at that time. And long story short, as this is happening, Tori gets another brand deal back home in Toronto. She's like, I need to fly home a day early. Like, are you okay if you, like, you and Adam, like, take the car back? I was like, yeah, I don't care. Like, whatever. I leave my yeah. best friend and my boyfriend in an Airbnb together. That's <laughs> and then, real. Oh real and, like, we, guys, fix, and we actually also had to, like, fix this Airbnb because, like, it was, we were, like, in a fun house. Like, everything, it was a very expensive, beautiful place. But everything was actually broken. Like, you go to, like, touch the door handle. The doorknob would fall off. You would go to wipe your hands and the, um, the, uh, bar. towel rack fell off and I was like something is ha- like something was wrong with this place so we're like patching everything and trying to like place everything back to normal getting out of this place anyways so we end up doing the Montreal b- style bagel run because we can't come here and not like get a bucket of bagels so we had four of us in the car it was the other couple and then me and Adam and we're driving home which ended up being literally like a 10 hour drive home which is not normal for Montreal to Toronto obviously six hours normally, oh yeah. exactly like it was there was accidents there was obviously so much Oshiega like trap like it was like we were all going crazy and we ended up it must have been I think we got two dozen bagels and then between the four of us we ate 24 bagels in that entire car ride just like, <laughs> like, and also for context dry bagels untoasted raw just like bagels ew kind of great though still no well, i wasn't mad like an everything bagel like ooh, <laughs> still kind of slaps but that was my last experience i don't think i need to eat another one for well like- they were driving my car and they pull up to my house and i'm like welcoming them like 
so well rested. I've like flown home the day before and they're like, oh, like as if they've returned. From <laughs> and there's war. crumbs all crumbs over your car. Like, I'm like, what did you guys like, do? Like, this is terrible. Yeah. So I have a bad taste in my mouth from the Montreal style bagels, as delicious as they are. I need a break from them. It makes me so sad. <laughs> I hate that. Um, okay. Take away your rose and thorn. Sorry. Anyways. Yeah. Your moment. Oh God. So much pressure. I don't know, man. For my thorn, the only thing I can think of is something that I actually told Jacqueline before starting the podcast. It's a little bit personal, but whatever. It's fine. It's the only thing that really was like thorny for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, over the last like two days, I've had the worst like heart chest pain oh, from anxiety. No. Just like, I think it's really catching up with me. Like just yeah. the feeling of anxiety from, from everything that's going on. And like the entire night last night, I kept waking up with like that chest pain and like I had dreams about it and it was just oh. so not pleasant. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Do you so that was rescue, like not fun. any of those, um, like the herbal? Oh my no, God. I was just trying to like rescue. breathe, you know? It's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, breathe. I, I get it. That's terrible. Oh yeah. So that was definitely thorny. Yeah. Um, as far as my roses, sourdough. Aye. 100%. I mean, the fact that I got that right. I the bubbles like, so it. happy beautiful the image oh. Corey, you need to go and reference her story i you, will you have it saved in your highlights or anything i don't i should oh save you it should in my make a highlight yeah. dedicated to it please it's a I request will. a formal <laughs> request yeah but that's definitely a rose do i do do two, two roses, two roses. Yeah. we like to outweigh okay. it the thorn another another rose definitely this experience was super Aww. cool i've never done a podcast before Yay. and like i'm i'm personally a really big fan of podcasts like it's all i really listen to like Wait, when what I'm are you cars, listening, to? looking for new ones right now um the you're allowed to swear right yeah yeah, yeah. i Our mean i've been swearing this entire time we should talk ourselves that's please. true please that's swear true. um i i love the guys we fuck podcast oh okay mm. i, I like, listen to that one do you is have, that like um, call her daddy no, it's it's basically like two female comedians. Um, it mm. it definitely revolves more around like sex and sexuality, but um, throughout the years they've expanded to obviously other topics. But it always kind of comes back to kind of like, cool, like uh, yeah, sex essentially. Cool. Do you um, ever and listen it's, to Girls Gotta Eat? I find it very no. simple. Like if you like guys, we fucked. Like I like Girls Gotta Eat. So definitely, okay, I'll check it out. I've been listening to lately. Yeah, so so it's been a really cool experience. Obviously, I also love your podcast. I was like binging it the other day. Oh, oh we have I watched so issues. many hours. Yeah, we've had, and specifically, we need Atlanta back. Actually, we should do a duo, the four of us, get everyone to be fun. Because unfortunately, we had a really rough day of audio when she came in, and she, we got to do her justice. Oh, we gotta her episode. Back. As great as the content was, we, yeah, the audio is like actually unbearable to listen and to. And we just struggle with the tech issues always. <laughs> Really? Well, on, on the video or just well, on like the sound? It's notably the audio. <laughs> Once we started going into studio, we started shooting with lav mics and we had yeah. a bit of like a process of the one camera we were shooting on could only take in two mics at a time. So when we were shooting our guests always on an independent camera, the shutter speed of the video somehow affected like the recording speed. So then it makes absolutely no sense. And trust me, I had spent like, honestly, I spent an entire day like and did not sleep because I was going so crazy. <sighs> It made no sense. I would line up the audio. We would do our slate, match up, obviously say Atlanta's track and our two tracks. And no matter what I did, how perfectly lined up it was, there was like somehow like a millisecond lag. So then eventually it would be like a human echo and something was so, like it made no sense though. Cause like, it, I don't even want to get into it. Anyways. I know it sounds like we're like now live on the pod trying to like be like, guys, please still love us. No, like, but it was so <laughs> frustrating because we've done all these episodes that we would resolve these issues. And then whenever there would be so many different struggles, especially once we were in studio, mm-hmm. then like, the lighting would change. Then we were filming with eTalk and then our mics were interfering with the social downs. Like it was all these hilarious like yeah. And along with all these negative comments I woke up to read this morning, the last one is literally, it was better when you were both sitting in a closet. I'm like, thank you so much for this review. Like, I hate my life. We, we started the podcast filming like in, in like- In a closet. I know, I, I know. So yeah. It was really, it's it just was savagery. It yeah. was easier. Anyway, so long story short, mm-hmm. now that we finally got into a place where we- finally have the audio in a good place now it's quarantine and we don't have access to those mics we're like well screw everything yeah it's fine screw it we're all. out here we're doing our best okay guys we're yeah. doing our best so I, we even let you get your rosebud no in, like, we're just talk- yeah rosebud oh no no it's totally fine you have a speaking stick <laughs> um yeah so that was my second one and then my rosebud is what I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to Montreal food honestly mm. like I want to go to Arthur's so badly mm-hmm. 
Arthur's, if you're coming to Montreal, if you're in Montreal, then you already know it's like such an amazing brunch spot. And I just want like, I just want pancakes. I just want, I just want the feeling of sitting at a restaurant at like noon on a Sunday. I agree. Wow. It's just the best feeling. The simple pleasure is truly. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that day. Me too. But until then. Until then, here we are. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This was so nice to be able to talk to you, talk to you about your life, your career, all the things that have got you to who you are today. And I'm sure our listeners are going to absolutely love this episode. Yeah, Um, thank you. This was so fun. Thank you so much for having me. And I don't know who would be listening and who isn't subscribed, but if you're not subscribed, get Jamie to half a million. So go follow and subscribe. We'll link everything down below. Um, Thanks again, Jamie, for coming on. This was the most fun podcast. Thank you. So honored to be a guest on your wonderful podcast. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Okay, guys. We'll (laughs) tune in next week. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.